<coughs> so, um, thank you all for coming. Uh, not that I guess you have much choice, sorry about that, uh, but please, very insistent. Uh, but I'm guessing that between that and this great big skull up here on the screen, you've probably got a good idea what this meeting is about. That and the fact that only a week ago, in this very meeting room, someone was murdered. Yeah, murder. Um, I think we all remember it. Uh, wondering why we couldn't get into the meeting room, why the door was locked, persuading building services to force it, and then the unknown woman sitting in a clean, empty room, very, very dead and very, very orange. So, this started me thinking. Well, I think it started all of us thinking about all kinds of things about who this woman was, and oh my god, I'm working with a homicidal maniac. But it also started me thinking about murder mysteries. The traditional murder mystery takes place in a stately home or pretty little village, but the facade of humdrum placidity is ripped away by bloody murder, and the detective must wade into unsuspected depths, searching for motive, means and opportunity amongst all the suspects. Then, finally, at the end of his investigations, he gathers everyone into the drawing room and tells them he knows who done it, and that the murderer is right here among them. Now, of course, uh, not many of us live in stately homes anymore, but we do work in huge corporations like Mary Me and Marvel, where we work, and we may not gather in drawing rooms, but we do have meeting rooms like this one. All of which is a very long-winded way of saying that the point of this presentation is that the murderer is one of us, right here in meeting room 1.5, and I'm going to tell you who it is. Now, if there's one thing murder mysteries are about, it's data, information, facts, and if there's one thing we in the design department of Mary Mead Marple are about, it's data and data visualisation. And not what better way to solve a murder mystery. So, traditionally, the detective in a murder mystery must analyse three things. Means, or how a murder was done. Motive, why it was done. And opportunity, when it was done. Three categories to collect data for. So let's start with means. The victim had been poisoned by the paint she had been painting with. Uh, Old-fashioned paint that still contained poisonous solvent, paint that we all knew was kept in the office. And forensic investigation has shown that she was drugged before she was painted, probably so she could be painted, apparently with sleeping pills that were also in the office. Again, pills we all knew were there. So any of us could have put our hands on the means if we wanted to. So let's think about the motive. First of all, it turns out that while we might not have recognised the orange woman, we all knew her very well. She was an employee of Whimsy Media, a client that we've been engaged in a, let's call it, challenging rebranding exercise with. Now, the reason we all knew her was this, me it was this email. After three months of work, four palette changes, an uncountable number of ridiculous client opinions, and a logo the same bright orange as the paint that inspired it, we get this email. Shirley doesn't like orange. Predictably enough, some of us were quite cross. There was shouting, a broken mouse and an avalanche of up... I'm not sure actually uploads can avalanche. Uh, anyway, hundreds of images uploaded to the work ton block, some of them data visualisation, some of them a bit scary, some of them just, well, inexplicable. So let's get to the data. Here are the amounts of uploads, and as you can see, absolutely everybody in the department, even Ali, our manager, contrib contributed something, although I acknowledge I was the worst. What I'm getting at is that every one of us had an opinion on Shirley Holmes and Orange, and we weren't afraid to share it. Well, you all had motive. So if everyone has access to the means, everyone has a motive, we need to look at opportunity. As we can see, rigor mortis suggests that Shirley was killed at around 9pm on the Wednesday night. Now, we've had our new security gates installed and we all have to swipe in and out with our stupid photo cards and this means there is a record of our movements every hour of every day, which is not in the least bit sinister. But what it does mean is that we know precisely who, was in, who in this department was in the office at the time of the murder, which turns out to be me. Which is upsetting, because I'm fairly sure that I was in the pub at the time, and I'm very, very sure that I'm not in the habit of pa painting people orange until they're dead. 
But that's not the only data we can find out about our building. This, for example, shows the activity for the air conditioning in the meeting rooms on the night of the murder, which is to say, there is none, apart from the meeting room that the murder was committed in. Three hours of air conditioning at the lowest setting possible, which some of us can testify is very, very lowest setting indeed. Captain Scott going out for a short walk, meat locker, freezing to death, cold. Which means two things. One is that rigor mortis might have been delayed, changing the timing of death, but also that no one would have sat still in that freezing room unless they were drugged with sleeping pills or actively engaged in painting someone to death, which suggests that Shirley must have been unconscious by at least 6.30, which means that we have to look at opportunity again. So, I'm not off the hook, but at least I've got company in Pippa and Blake here. Now, I said that we all knew the orange paint was in the office, and we all knew that because Blake had not stopped going on about it, about how hard it was to find, what a lovely orange it was, how that inspired him to get the right colour for the Whimsy Media logo, etc, etc, the colour that Shirley didn't like. In much the same way, we knew that someone had stolen sleeping pills out of Pippa's Marlowe's handbag, and how upset she was about it. So could Blake have stolen the tablets? Well, Pippa says he was in the, in the studio with her all evening, but... It turns out the meeting room, this meeting room, the meeting room that Shirley was murdered in, was booked under Pippa's name. Are Blake and Pippa in it together? Well, I want to talk about Mario. Mario is the head of security for our building. Mario is a stickler for rules. This is a good thing in a head of security. It is a bad thing if you are a designer who has lost his security pass, like I did <laughs> two days before the murder. I lost my card and Mario made me get, me get a new one. A new one with a very unflattering photograph indeed. So, on the night of the murder, I swipe out with my new card and then swipe back in with my old one. The lost one. The stolen one. Which means we shouldn't be worrying about who was in the office at the time of the murder. But who wasn't? Abbott Campion, our manager, Sam Shovel, our illustrator, here at Poiret, our designer. So, what about Ali? Well, the email inviting Shirley Holmes to the meeting at our offices that evening was sent from Ali's account. But let's have a look at that email. It makes sense, doesn't it? There's a spelling mistake, but it's readable. There's no obscure words of four syllables, no tedious management jargon, no impenetrable thickets of subclauses. No resemblance at all to anything Ali would write. <laughs> In fact, Flesh Kincaid analysis shows that it is both more stupid and much more readable than what Ali usually writes in emails. Ali didn't invite Shirley to the meeting at all. It's all about Hera. Well, there's one thing we all know about Hera. She's crazy. In fact, I think at some point we've all had that conversation about if there was ever a murder in the office, Hera would be the prime suspect. I mean, last time we were in the pub, she actually told me, I don't drink, otherwise I start telling people how I like to kill them. <laughs> she even suggested killing Shirley Holmes by drowning her in orange juice. Not that different to suffocating her in orange paint, maybe. But, actually, thinking about some of her, Hera's homicidal fantasies, you know what? They're all up close and personal. Not things like poisoning, it's all stabbing and blowing up and shooting their elaborate ninja deaths, and more importantly, they're all fantasies. I don't think that Hera would even hurt a fly. That will actually, I think she probably prefers flies to people, but you get my drift. <laughs> I think it's extraordinarily unlikely that Hera killed anyone. So, to return to our old friends and mentor, Sherlock Holmes, and the mystery of Silver Blaze, the famous dog that didn't bark in the night time. What is it that didn't happen? Because all of us have evidence against this. Email sent from Ali, room booked by Pippa, my security pass used, here is orange death fantasy, Blake's paint. Everyone except for Sam. Nothing. Except that there is. I'm a designer, so I want to talk about coffee. We have a coffee machine by our desks, and we all know each other's orders, right? Two lattes, one a cappuccino, one white americano, one black americano, one double espresso. Sam's double espresso. 
These are the espressos made by the machine, and you can see Sam swiped in in the morning, someone makes a double espresso. Then another just after lunch. These are the only ones, two a day, until 6pm on the night of the murder. Just after someone swiped in with my security pass, someone makes another. A double espresso and a latte. A latte, no doubt, containing Pippa sleeping pills, a latte intended for Shirley Holmes. Yes, Sam Shovel, you did it. You invited Shirley Holmes here, drugged her and painted her to death. You... Look out! Someone grab him! Stop him, Inspector! Stop him!